We're Probably Lost, and welcome to our YouTube channel. In this vlog, we will be documenting our experience at the oldest restaurant in the world in continuous operation, Sobrino de Botin. Here in Madrid, few places hold an enchanting past while also gracefully making a mark on the present quite like this one. The restaurant was founded way back in 1725 by young Frenchman Jean Botin. At the time, there were only two floors, with the wine cellar being used for storage and the upper floors used for family dwelling. As time passed and notoriety inevitably followed, so did the growth of the restaurant and expansion to the two top floors. A unique characteristic of Sobrino de Botin that we found fascinating is that throughout its reign as the crown staple of Cale Cucieros, or Cutlery Street, it's kept the same flame burning in its oven continuously, never to be extinguished. Another unique detail in their history is that during its early years, young romantic painter Francisco de Goya worked as a waiter while awaiting his acceptance into the Royal Academy of Fine Arts. While walking through the various corridors throughout the four floors of dining, it's easy to understand why the likes of Graham Greene, Benito Perez Galdos, and Ernest Hemingway fell for its charm. These walls are steeped in tradition with a timelessness that you have to experience to understand. After our fantastic meal, we made a pit stop at Mercado de San Miguel before heading home. Mercado de San Miguel was hands down our favorite eatery in Madrid, and we often found ourselves just wandering around the various vendors, looking at all of the beautiful wines, meats, cheeses, and desserts. We highly recommend putting this lovely restaurant and market in your travel plans whenever you visit Madrid. We hope you enjoy. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. It's beautiful. There's one thing I've noticed so far, it's that this restaurant has a very specific way of doing things. It makes sense because they've been doing it for so long, but it's cool to see it. One thing that I've noticed that's definitely unique is these older buildings are definitely not built like the new modern buildings in any other place that I've been to. I went to the restroom earlier, and it was a bit of a maze. I had to go through the door, I had to cut down a few stairs, go through the corridor, come back upstairs, and go off to the right, go through a back room, and then there was a little door at the back, which was no taller than about six feet, which isn't a problem for me, who's 5'9 and a half. But anyone, <laughs> but anybody who's, you know, six foot above, might, might be a little guy, so you might have to lower your head. But that was one thing that kind of caught me off guard, is how intricate these buildings are. This is a lot fancier than I'm used to. I'm constantly being corrected by Hannah. She's like, I think you should use the butter knife. And then she hands it to me and I've never seen a knife like this in my life. That's incredible. That part of meat is fantastic. I'm so excited. This is the cod in tomato sauce. It looks so good. Wow. It's so flaky. Like it just breaks right apart. It's really hard to go wrong with either of these options. Wrapping up this video of Madrid, we felt like this was a fun way and a unique way to close out Madrid, being at the oldest restaurant in the world. We just really wanted to make the last night in this old, elegant, legal town special. This is definitely a luxury for us. We are over here on a budget, but this is also something that we've budgeted for. And along with the help of Hannah's cousin, Kinsey, we were able to make this happen. So first and foremost, thank you so much, Kinsey Mashke, the Mashke clan. We will have this memory forever, and it's thanks to you. I just, 
can't say enough about this place. It, it feels really surreal to say that I've eaten at the oldest restaurant in the world, according to Guinness Book of World Records. And if you're ever in Madrid, we really recommend you coming here, getting the cod, getting the filet, or getting the suckling pig. It kind of looks like it's going to talk to you, but it looks delicious at the same time. <laughs> that sounds so weird. Everything you thought it would be. It was delicious. So, so good. I'm so glad we went. It's just a really cool thing to say that we did, and we felt like we had to do it before we left Madrid. And before we end the night, I think Hannah's wanting to go into this little market and get some dessert. Would you get us? Fruta uh, tarte. Are you happy with fruit what you got? Tarte. Yes. You got a fruit tart? Tart. And then I got a lemon tart. Lemon tart. So I guess this is how we're going to close out the night. We feel like we might as well close it out with something sweet. Super sweet. Thank you so much for joining us on this. And we'll see you on the road to Malaga.